Let's go cross the Nullarbor. The Nullarbor is a 1200 kilometre stretch of road from Norseman in Western Australia to Seduna in South Australia. There is almost nothing along this stretch of road except for a few road houses, but despite what we'd heard, we certainly didn't find this drive boring. We found one of our favourite campsites of the entire trip, although this side excursion wasn't without one small mishap. We are Nigel and Sue and we've been living in our self-converted van on the road in Australia for the last two and a half years. Join us as we show you the highlights and hidden gems of this vast beautiful country. It was kind of fitting the day that we left the beautiful beaches of Esperance, it was pouring rain. Before heading east though, we had one important stop to make which meant a 400 kilometre detour north of Norseman to Kalgoorlie. We're in Kalgoorlie today, so we're staying here for a couple of nights with our friends Richard and Liz. Thanks so much for having us. And we are here for two reasons, well three really. One, to see Richard and Liz. Two, to check out the super pit, which is this big hole in the ground. And the third reason is we're going to start the Nullarbor Golf from here. We had a lot of fun playing the Nullarbor Golf Course, which is the longest course in the world. Make sure you check out our video next week for all the fun. Is like, that a brothel? Mm -hmm. Like with windows, like in Amsterdam? Yeah, well, it's red. Oh, you're lying. I'm not. That, 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 so no one's working now. The Super Pit is a huge open cut gold mine that has been in operation since 1989. We were quite shocked at the size of the hole in the ground and to be honest we found it confronting and upsetting. So for every 1 million tonnes of ore extracted there are between 250 and 300 kgs of gold. 1 million tonnes of, of, of earth. It's nuts isn't it? There. Bucket weighs 68 tons, 38 cubic meters of rock and earth. It only takes about three or four scoops and, and a dump truck's full. It just is very confronting when you're nature lovers like we are to stand on the edge of something like this and look in and realize that all that nature has just been lost forever. It's such a tricky Thing though because this is Australia's economy rides on mining we know that. The city centre of Kalgoorlie is full of historic buildings and really quite pretty. We had a fun pizza night with Richard and Liz and paid our respects to Tina Turner who had passed away that day. A few red wines, <laughs> a few, few red wines later Here we go. And, and look out we've got, we've got Liz, Liz and Sue doing the night bush otherwise known as the nut bush. Next stop is the Woodjimulfa Roadhouse. This is your quintessential Australian roadhouse. Fuel station, a general store, and of course, a pub. And they have a replica here of the Golden Eagle gold nugget. I don't actually think it was this big because this is bloody massive but you can kind of see why it was called the Golden Eagle. Okay, time to head to Norseman. The jug's going on, that was the deal. Started the heater from the bed with the remote. Um, 
So by the time I got up to put the kettle on, it was nice and warm. Good news and bad news. Uh, good news is it's been running uh, for 30 minutes now. It's like one degree outside. The bad news, see a bit of smoke haze there. The next job is going to be to um, figure out where the smoke's coming in. But we're warm. <laughs> Can I just add, when I got up at like 3 a.m. to go to the toilet, Nigel's saying, is it time? Is it time? <laughs> because he wanted to put the heater on. I'm like, no, go yeah. back to sleep. It's only 3.30. Well, you know, it's been a long, hard road to get to this this point. So, yeah, bloody thing. Another day on the road. So we're now about to officially start crossing the Nullarbor. I'm pretty excited about this drive tonight. Yeah, well, you would be because you've never been across the Nullarbor at all, have you? No. Um, you know, don't, um, just check my left. Yeah, all clear. Um, having crossed it numerous times in a helicopter, um, I've had the the privilege to do it that way but yeah this is the first time for me on road so it's going to be nice to um, do the comparison. We're planning like um, three days. Let's do it. One of the vital pieces of equipment for a road trip like this is the CB radio, two-way UHF whatever you want to call it. We're coming up now behind a very large oversized vehicle so Nigel will give a call to let them know that we want to pass. These guys, uh, I'll be passing on the right. Well, it's safer than the left, I'll come up the right. Okay friends, we've made it to Balladonia. Now I am super excited about this stop, primarily because of its history with Skylab. Those of you old enough to remember 1979 may well remember when Skylab was falling. I was in my first year of high school and really remember the excitement about where was Skylab going to fall. And I believe part of it fell here around Balladonia. So this bit of wiring here, this is a real piece. However, we're not sure that this is actually a real piece. But whether it's real or not, the story is pretty cool. So the Skylab returned to Earth in July of 1979, basically dropped into the ocean here um, but there was also a trail of debris from Esperance up through Balladonia up in this area here and one of the really interesting things was that here at Balladonia Roadhouse they received a phone call from the US President Jimmy Carter to apologize for dumping debris um, around the roadhouse uh, and they also offered a $10,000 reward for the first piece to be found and it was a young kid that found it in his backyard so that was pretty cool but yeah I remember it was like just this huge frenzy. Nigel was it like that in New Zealand? Do you remember hearing about it when no, it was coming down? I don't remember it no, at all actually to be honest. Oh gosh yeah it was like huge. Well after all that excitement, me, <laughs> Nigel's hungry we're going to have some lunch and then we will go and play our golf hole. Then we arrived at the longest straight road. Another day done, we've just pulled into camp, got some popcorn on for a bit of a snack. Nigel's pottering away down there. He's just putting that uh, cover over the gas vent so that we don't get asphyxiated by fumes tomorrow morning when we turn on the heater. 
and I think we'll definitely be turning it on tomorrow because it is quite cold already and we just learned that there's a whole new time zone in Australia that we didn't even know about called Central Western Time there was a sign saying put our clocks forward 45 minutes we looked at each other and gone never heard about that but then our phones jumped forward 45 minutes let us know in the comments have you ever heard of this time zone I think it's only between here, Kaiguna, and the border because when we get there, it has to go forward another 45. Mmm, popcorn. Morning, guys. Um, diesel heater 101 slash 530. It's working again. We've, uh, we had a really cold night last night, probably colder than the uh, night before. Both had our beanies on at 3 in the morning. You still see the problem that we've got. We're about to get asphyxiated. Let me just see Susie through the through the haze. So I've, I've fashioned a um, cover last night to go over that vent, but still sucking in smoke from somewhere. Maybe it's coming up through the cracks in the door. I'm, I'm only assuming at this stage that it's still that initial fire up when you get the most smoke and it's getting sucked through crevices somewhere. This is where we stayed last night. We're just outside of Kaiguna in a rubbish dump by the looks of it. This place is disgusting. There's so much rubbish everywhere. Anyway, it was a nice place to pull off the road. Fairly quiet, um, yeah, and just an overnighter. So it's nice and early in the morning. We're just about to take off. It's really bizarre because we've been driving along this flat plain for days and all of a sudden the road drops down into this gap. Stopped off for lunch in the interests of eating up a whole lot of fresh fruit and veg. We're having guacamole on toast for lunch. Mm -hmm. Poor Nigel's being harassed by a fly. Oh. Come on Nigel, get him. Still have quite a bit of fruit here. So that's a, a banana cake I'm gonna to make tomorrow. And then there's two, four, six apples six bananas at certain spots along the highway it doubles as a runway for the royal flying doctor service we've just passed through eucla we stopped there to get some fuel and our next stop in about 10 kilometers is going to be the south australian border i'm really excited night to be crossing into our next state yeah i guess um yeah another another tick in the box isn't it because we haven't First time the van has been into SA, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Just coming through the border into South Australia here. No requirement to stop here to go. We do have to stop the other way coming into WA. Welcome to South Australia. Yeah. Uh, so just like that, we've crossed the border, friends, and we are in South Australia now. Fortunately, the quarantine isn't right at the border, but the actual quarantine station is not till we get to Sejuna, which we'll get there tomorrow or the next day sometime. The giant kangaroo statue was about the only wildlife we saw on the road, despite these signs, which we saw quite a bit. finding a free camp on the, the Bunda Cliffs at the top of the Great Australian Bight so you can park right near the cliffs and camp right there. Right now. <laughs> oh, I know, see the cliff's falling away, Nigel. Oh my god, I've got my eyes closed, friends. Look at this, guys. I don't know how close I'm going to be able to walk to the edge of this cliff. Look at where we camped. <laughs> the sun's just set over there. There's a few fellow campers. Oh my God, look at the color in the sky. 
at the colour of the water. Good morning. I think this is going to be one of my favourite campsites ever. Look at where we are. We're on the Bunda Cliffs. We're parked maybe four metres from the cliff. And the cliff goes down probably like 100 metres right down into the Great Australian Bight. So we're right on the edge of Australia here. In a couple of weeks time, we would see Southern right whales out here. This is a real nursery for them. I'm keeping my eyes peeled, but have not seen any so far. That's no, awesome, isn't it? Where's the whales? I think we're like two weeks too early. Yeah, well I saw them in August, so. Did they run from June, June through, through, to, through or September, or something. something like that? Yeah. We are heading off now from the Bunda Cliffs. Well, we're gonna go further along the Bunda Cliffs, leaving this campsite, which was absolutely beautiful, but we didn't see any whales, sadly. And we're going to head a bit further east, just so we've got a bit more time tomorrow when we do have a lot that we want to see and do tomorrow. We've just stopped for the most epic view of the cliffs. I thought where we stayed last night was good, but this is even better. There's a short walk out to a lookout. We're going to head out there. So while it was nice and warm and sunny at our campsite, the wind has picked up and it's gotten a bit chilly. Nigel's just reading about the marine life here. Sea lions, whales and salmon. Salmon. And dolphins. I'd love to just see any of those, especially a whale. That's spectacular, isn't it? Yeah, Thunder Cliffs Camp Number Two. Oh, geez, guys, uh, check this view out. It's just epic. halfway up those friggin' cliffs, wow. smashing into them, wow. and the spray coming up like there's, I don't know, the whole fire brigade's down there with their bloody fire hoses. Just, wow. Uh, just One of the most spectacular things we've ever seen, and you can see here this crack, like that bit's just about to tumble, and this is going to be the next bit to go. A hundred odd feet down these cliffs. And this is where we camped. <laughs> It's so cool. Been a bit productive this afternoon. I've bagged a cake. Nigel's been out uh, photographing the sea spray and he's been on dolphin watch. As yet unsuccessful. But a couple did come past and tell us they'd seen dolphins. So I have hopes. We are now going to sit out here 
and enjoy a nice adult beverage while we watch the sunset. I, I, I just still can't get over it, Nigel. I thought this would be a nice, safe spot to sit close to the van and away from the crumbling cliffs. Nigel is sitting over there. Yeah, you was. <laughs> Big meanie. You guys have seen how much overhang there is on some of these cliffs right where we are, right? Uh, I, may, I'm, I, I might go a little bit closer. And then we were treated to one of the best sunsets of our lives. I'm just so grateful right now. Did you take a look at that? <laughs> it's awesome. This is what this is what gratitude is all about, folks. And, th and this is why we, we do what we do. Because we get to see this. What an amazing world we live in. Morning friends! Today we say farewell to the beautiful Bunda Cliffs and head back to civilization. We've got the Nullarbor Roadhouse to stop off at. Very iconic spot there. Um, we'll be finishing the Nullarbor and heading to Seduna. On the way out on this rocky road we picked up an unwanted hitchhiker. Feels like we've got a um, rock stuck in the tyres. Ah, there it is. <laughs> Check that bad boy out. Yeah, we don't want that. Just um, back up a little bit. Hey, stop. Might need a crowbar to get that out. Yeah, gonna need something to wedge it out. Hammer it out. So we've just arrived at the Nullarbor Roadhouse. It's pretty busy here today. It's quite iconic with this big old sign behind me there. And this really marks the beginning and the end, I guess, of the Nullarbor Drive, depending on which way you're coming. The old Nullarbor Roadhouse was established in 1956 to sell fuel to travellers. And the old building has been kept as a kind of museum. It's really cool to see what it would have been like back in the day. The roadhouse marks the western end of the treeless plain. The word Nullarbor comes from Latin, meaning no trees. Somehow we missed both signs marking the beginning and the end of the plain. Look at this, wheat fields, we're back in civilization. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Yeah, I'm with you, I think I prefer the civilization. Let's go back to the Bunda Cliffs. Nigel, I'm really surprised at all these ruins we're seeing around here. Like, so many ruined farmhouses. And windmills. There's like windmills everywhere. We are definitely out of the wilderness now and back into the farmland. Sheep. We hope you enjoy this journey across the Nullarbor with us. Join us next time as we have some major laughs. <laughs>
and Sue has a few hissy fits playing the Nullarbor golf links. Thanks for watching. See you next time. See ya.